Good afternoon, you two pipe smokers. Beautiful day in New York. 57 degrees presently. Beautiful blue sky, clear, crisp, nice. Just leaving work. Um, in a challenging few weeks, uh, business has been a little off, slow. Uh, transmission business in general, as the industry has been slow across the board for some reason. I think there's a combination of things. Uh, I think back to school, the taxes, around here is property tax time. Uh, I think the GM strike, I think a lot of negative news. I think people are in fear and they pull back a little bit. Uh, I pay attention to a few different markers and uh, Part suppliers have been calling. Typically, when they do that, it's because it's uh, business has been a little off. The tool guys to come around. We have three tool trucks: Mac Go, Snap On, and Mac. They're all saying it's slow. Um, transmission part suppliers that we use, they say it's slow. So it rattles the nerves a little bit when you're self-employed, no matter how many years you're doing it. You never seem to get used to it. So hopefully next week is a little better. But um, anyway, the subject came up this week on... Uh, Codger with Simon uh, London calling and basically what is a codger and pipe smoking and that whole subject and as I usually do when I hear a video like that I, it gets my wheels turning and thinking and you know I don't think it's fair maybe fair is not a good word to use you can't compare the pipe smoker of years ago to a pipe smoker today in a lot of respects. Because I think the parallel is not the same. I think a lot of pipe smokers years ago, the so-called codgers, if you want to use that word, it was a cheaper form of smoking than cigarettes, possibly. Um, because many pipe smokers smoked, at least the ones I knew. My grandfather that smoked, he smoked cigars and a pipe. I think he was a cigarette smoker prior to that. Um, other pipe smokers I know, um, a friend of mine I grew up with, his father smoked a pipe, but he also smoked cig cigarettes. And they didn't treat the pipe like we treat it today. The pipe to them was just a vessel to smoke tobacco. They really didn't care for the pipe itself. They banged it around. Um, they typically bought the cheapest pipes available at the time. Very seldom did they even clean them. If they did, it was in a crude way with a pocket knife and just anything to get it back smoking again. Um, usually the stem was all chewed to bits, hardly anything left. You still see evidence of that if you buy an estate pipe. I mean, some of these pipes, you get them, they're absolutely disgusting. It takes a lot of work to get them to smoke again. They're all caked up. It looks like they were never even reamed. So I think that pipe smoker is different than the, the modern, I'll call it the modern day pipe smoker. I mean, most of us in the YTPC smoke as a, a hobby and we enjoy the pipe as much as we enjoy and maybe sometimes more than the actual smoking of it. It's 
sweet as that sounds, I think we tend to like keeping our pipes nice and you like collecting pipes and you like to cleaning them and caring for them. I think it's more of a hobby now than a necessity. And that's not to take away from anything anybody does, or uh, like Ben the Artful Codger, he likes that nostalgic uh, pipe blends and pipes, and there's nothing wrong with that, whatever floats your boat. Um, I happen to really like custom-built pipes, which are, as we know, probably back in the day the Cadillac of pipes, other than the Dunhill. Um, But for me, I, I like filtered pipes to mitigate the moisture problem, which recently I found a way to convert them that's working out well. And then I really, really enjoyed a vintage pipe in that manner. But thinking about the tobaccos, I think there's a big difference we have hundreds and hundreds of blends out there. And I said this in one of my uh, videos. Let's, let's say for argument's sake there's a hundred blends. There's more than that, but let's say for argument's sake there's a hundred. We'll take that number, it's easy to figure. I bet you if you had the recipe of all those hundred blends in front of you, it's a combination of the, with, exception, with the exception to Latakia blends, which that's like in a class all by itself. We're talking the straight tobaccos, the Burleys, the Virginias, the Cavendishes. Every tobacco out there is just a recipe of those standard uh, tobaccos. And it's how they're put together that they come up with their new uh, recipe. So really, we're all smoking that old Kaja blend, whether we want to admit it or not. And in many cases, we don't know it. You take Captain Black Royal, which I like. Uh, it's Lane 1Q, it's basically the same. Uh, Casey Jones. Mystery Train is basically the same as Captain Black Royal. They were all put out by Lane. Then you have the Lane 1Q that a lot of tobacco stores, brick and mortars, keep it in bulk and they rename it something else as a house blend. And it happens to be Lane 1Q. And I think the list is goes on and on. So I think it's all a combination of mixing those tobaccos to give you different names and different variations. And So maybe out of that 100 blends, if you had the recipes in front of you, the exact recipe, you could probably narrow it down to, I'd say, 25, maybe 30 different blends when it's all said and done. The twist comes when you start adding the Latakias and the Bariques, and then you start adding the toppings like bourbon or rum, uh, whiskey, uh, sugar, uh, flavorings. But it's all still those same blends with just toppings. The message anyway should be just enjoy whatever you like, period. There's no right or wrong. Uh, 
you know, filtered versus non-filtered or expensive pipe versus a cheap pipe. I mean, it's, this has been debated for many, many, many years. There's some cheap basket pipes that smoke better than some high-end pipes. So it's just a matter of getting the, the right combination of wood right dimensions, the right, it's just, some things, it's like buying, going in a store and trying on a pair of shoes. How many times you try on a pair of shoes and it don't feel quite right, you ask the guy bring me another pair of the same shoe and that shoe fits better. Same size in the box, you know, the subtle variations in everything. And wood is a really tough thing to gauge. Um, you can just get that perfect piece of briar, even if it's on a cheap pipe, that happens to be maybe harder than the next one, or it just has something magical about it. To further expand on this, I like guitars and try, I'm not a great player, but um, I still like the instrument. And I used to follow some blues um, uh, players that I liked, that I read up on. And Stevie Ray Vaughan, his number one Stratocaster that he used, and he called it the number one, uh, he found in a guitar store, hanging on the wall, that was pieced together from a few different Stratocasters. And he played it, and the owner of the store, this is the story I read anyway, said, why do you want that? He said, it's ugly, it's, it's worn, it's nothing correct on it. The neck is not matched, it's a different year than the body. And he was playing, he says, there's just something special about this. And he took it, and it was his number one go-to uh, guitar. So I think a lot of things are like that. And pipes are no exception. You know, if you watch uh, Northwest Pipe Smoker, Tom, he smokes a lot of custom builds. <laughs> if you follow some of his videos, he talked about cleaning them and working on them. He always took a drill and enlarged the hole to 530 seconds. And he said that's the magic number that he found that makes them smoke better. So, I really think a lot of us get caught up in Maybe nostalgia, maybe price, uh, most certainly looks. But you just sometimes hit on a pipe that could be the cheapest one in your collection that just has something about it that smokes better than even an expensive pipe. Now, I'll give you an example. Um, I have corn cobs. I really, I hate to say this, I don't like a corn cob pipe. As good as they smoke, I, I tend never to smoke them. And that's a mind thing. Uh, I've, I put the better stems on them, which I think the corn cob stems they come with are terrible. Uh, you get a taste from them. They taste rubbery almost to me. Uh, so I usually put a forever stem on them. But I just hardly ever smoke them because I, I don't like the idea of that pipe for some reason. And yet many, many 
pie fuckers love them, and I, I, I'll admit it myself, they do smoke good. But for some reason, in my head, I shouldn't be smoking this corn cob pipe, I should be smoking a briar pipe. I know that sounds stupid. And it probably, it is stupid, and I admit it, but it's just... And I have a, a, a corn cob, the general pipe, which I happen to like. It's a big bowl. It smokes really well, but I hardly ever smoke it. I, I feel self-conscious when I smoke a corn cob pipe for some reason. And yet I admit it smokes very well. It's weird. Very weird. But the message is just enjoy whatever you smoke, whatever you do. Have fun with it. Don't be critical. And I think that's a, the best advice. Report TV guide is out. Interesting read. I like the format. I like the way he does it. Phil does a great job with that. second edition now of the Briar Report TV Guide. You check it out if you haven't already. Briarreport.org. Sign up and get your copy. It's a good read. And what I like most about it, he uses this, uh, this nice software, which I played with myself and other things, that makes it like a virtual magazine where you can flip through it. You actually hear the page turning and everything, which is a nice, um, it's almost like you're reading it in paper form. any of you have tried this, I have, and it works. Um, the CBD oil, I buy the cream, I buy the Charlotte's Web. It was very expensive for a tube, but my knees hurt at night, uh, especially after if I'm standing a long time, and I put the CBD cream on my knees, and it, uh, it really helps. The other day I woke up, I must have slept wrong and my neck hurt. I put a little bit on the neck the other night and the next morning my neck didn't hurt. And you don't need a prescription, it's the over-the-counter. It's pricey though. I buy the Charlotte Web one, which they claim is the best. Um, you get it in the... We have a, a Mother Earth store. Uh, it's called, they sell health food things, and if they have it there. But now a friend of mine told me about this CBD oil place, which I'm heading there now, and they have the oil in a spray, 
it's supposed to work just as well or better than the cream. So I'm going in there to pick up a little spray thing of it. But if you haven't tried it, you have some pain in your shoulders or knees, it really works well. This is not the one you take under your tongue or anything, it's, it's an ointment. Or in this case, they have the oil or the creams. And a lot of people have been using it, it really works. Anyway, guys, I think that uh, wraps up this drive video. I hope you get some good out of it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.